Hi guys, today we are going to discuss about primary resistance starter and these are the topics will be covered in this video. Uh, so the torque versus slip and current versus slip curve will be discussed. A locked rotor torque, pull up torque, breakdown torque and flow torque. So these are the uh, different type of torques exist uh, during the motor operation that we will be discussing in the video. And need for primary resistance starting and line diagram for primary resistance starter with two step acceleration and four step acceleration will be discussed. And facts about primary resistance starting and the requirement for reduced voltage starter selection will be also discussed in this video. So, first let us see what is the locked rotor torque LRT. So, this locked rotor torque is a torque a motor produces when its rotor is stationary and full power is applied to the motor. So let us assume the motor is in standstill condition, it is not running, we are going to give the full power, the rated power to the motor and the motor is going to start rotating that particular time whatever the torque which is produced by the motor will be called as locked rotor torque. So the current which is taken for producing this torque will be called as locked rotor current. And the difference between this locked rotor current and then the initial start or inrush current of a motor, the starting current of the motor is that the full supply if it is given to the motor and the torque or the current which is produced is called as locked rotor torque. In case if the voltage is reduced by any means of starting methods like the star delta starting, or auto transformer starting, or primary resistance starting. So then the torque or the current whichever is taken or whichever is produced during the starting time will not be called as locked rotor torque or locked rotor current. So this is the difference between the locked rotor current and the initial inrush or starting current of an induction motor. If you have any starting method then the current will be called as a starting current and if you don't have any uh, starting method and directly you are giving a supply full supply to the motor if the motor is started the current which is taken during that time will be called as locked rotor torque also this locked rotor torque can be defined in another situation where the motor is jammed though the power is given the motor is jammed because of uh, some physical connection physical uh, requirements or physical conditions or you know the motor cannot able to pull the load with that particular supply so that is also can called as a locked rotor then the rotor is in a uh, stationary condition or standstill condition but if little amount of power is extra given that time the rotor start rotates so overcoming the load of that particular locked condition and it start moving that time the current or the rotor torque also called as locked rotor torque but this current will not be called as a starting uh, current or a starting torque so the starting torque is entirely different from this locked rotor torque. So pull up torque, so the pull up torque is the torque required to bring a load up to its rated speed. Say for example a motor is rated for 1725 rpm, you have uh, the load which is connected to the motor either it is a pulley or belt or conveyor whatever it is and if you give a supply the motor try to uh, run from the zero state to the rated speed. So the torque required to bring the motor from the zero speed to the rated speed is called as a pull up torque. So if you see the graph you can see uh, during the starting of the motor there will be an inrush or starting current here or the locked rotor current here and from there if the current is uh, slowly reduces and when the time passes it is reduces and when it is reaching to the motor rated value then the automatically the speed also may be almost reached to the uh, condition. So you can see the speed characteristics here, motor uh, speed characteristics. When the time passes from the starting period, slowly the speed increases and when it reaches to the rated speed and the speed will become constant here. Breakdown torque is a maximum torque a motor can provide without an abrupt reduction in motor speed. So if you are keep loading the motor, then every motor has its own capacity of pulling the load. If you keep increasing the load, then at one particular stage what is going to happen, the motor may not be able to pull the load and the speed slowly decreases. At this point, the torque, uh, if you measure, that is called as a breakdown 
the car or when the speed the rated speed is slowly started reducing uh, because of the load it is called as the breakdown torque and if you keep increasing the load beyond this limit then the motor will go to the uh, you know standstill condition or the speed reduces to a very lower value so this condition is a very dangerous condition where uh, the motor coils are getting heated up the insulation may fail because of the over heating of the uh, conductor and the insulation full load torque so this is the torque required to run the motor at a rated power at the full speed of the motor so you can see this graph uh, it is explaining about the motor current rated current in the motor rated current and with respect to time and the next one is motor speed with respect to the time so here motor driving the load at a rated speed and motor current at a rated value so here both are in the rated condition it is both are being uh, you know constant value so this particular time whatever the full load torque we are getting that is the so because we have already reached the uh, full load current and the speed also in the full speed so that means this particular time whatever the torque we are obtaining from the motor it is called as a full load the torque so this is the graph so which is uh, linking all these different type of uh, torque and uh, currents so here we are uh, seeing a locked rotor torque so it is almost a 500 percentage of the uh, full load uh, current and uh, we are also seeing the locked rotor torque here so which is almost one to three percentage of the full load torque and the full load torque which is the torque required to pull the motor from the standstill condition to 100 percentage of its uh, full load torque and uh, this the full load torque is the one where uh, if you increase the load beyond this limit then the motor may reduce the speed and it may go to the stall condition and full load torque is here you can see uh, at the maximum you know, uh, rated uh, load conditions so the torque whatever is being trained here it is a full load torque and you can see at this full load torque condition the slip of this uh, motor is reduced to very much uh, lower maybe it is around 5 or 6 percentage of this particular uh, slip but if you see the slip at the initial stage here when the motor is starting the slip is very high and the slip is slowly decreasing when it is reaching to the full load torque or full load current condition so this is from the starting condition to uh, until it is reaching to the full load uh, current or full load torque condition so the need for primary resistance starting so resistance starting is to avoid uh, sudden high starting torque and the shock of a sudden acceleration and uh, when full voltage starting may cause serious line disturbance due to high inrush current so we are giving a full supply to a motor and the motor tries to uh, run uh, to take full load and it tries to reach the maximum speed or the rated speed uh, within a uh, no time so because of that it uh, pulls more amount of current from the supply so which may uh, uh, cause a disturbance in the supply which we are getting from the um, supplier side and to avoid unnecessary wear and tear on equipment by reducing starting torque so some motors when, when we are uh, starting say for example the motor connected to the belt or to the pulley if the motor suddenly starts and uh, pick up the speed very fast so the belt may slip or uh, the gear may get damaged or uh, you know the blades may get damage so this kind of things can happen because of sudden acceleration so this can be also avoided by giving a slow or a step by step starting torque so we'll see the line diagram of primary resistance starter uh, with a two step acceleration so this is the circuit diagram or uh, the line diagram you can see uh, where uh, you have the three phase motor here and the three phase supply here and uh, we have a control transformer which will reduce the voltage from higher level to lower level and we have stop switch and start switch here to control the operation we have two contactors one is main contactor and another one is a starting contactor or, uh, or you can say it is main contactor and starting contactor but no problem with that and uh, when we are uh, pressing this start push button the car contact will be getting closed here the current flow takes place from here to the main contactor here so the main, main contactor is uh, uh, energized so the main contacts will be getting closed like this when the contacts are getting closed here then 
the power supply whatever available here passes through the resistor here the starting resistor and it goes to the motor coil so at the same time the axillary contacts here is also getting closed these two contacts will be getting closed so when these two contacts are getting closed here it is uh, help helpful for latch this the start push button and this contact is going to trigger the timer so based on the time preset time whatever we set either 5 seconds or 10 seconds based on that the timer is going to close this path here when this is getting closed then the start contactor or the yes contactor is going to uh, energize and this is getting energized then uh, this contact is going to get closed here like this when this contact is getting closed like this here what is going to happen it is going to bypass this starting resistors so the full supply will be fed to the motor at this stage so you can divide into two um, stages one stage where you uh, reduce the voltage with the help of uh, resistors and we are uh, giving the reduced voltage to the motor so we will have a reduced uh, speed torque all those things uh, current everything and uh, after certain time period once the motor is uh, reached to that particular stage then we are removing the uh, starting resistor so that the full supply voltage will be fed and now the motor will reach to the full load condition or the speed condition the same thing with the four step we are going to have a four different uh, resistors are three different resistors and here again same we are going to have stop and stop switches by operating the stop switch we are going to enable the main contactor the main contactor is going to close this all three main contacts and the year two axillary contacts of m so by doing this the motor is going to start with the reduced voltage which includes s1 s2 s3 resistance and the coil resistance are connected all those are all connected in series and at the same time the timer one will be enabled the timer one uh, based on the time delay say for example five seconds based on the time delay after this time is lapsed the timer contact will be getting closed once this timer contact is getting closed then yes one contactor is getting on or energized because of this here these s1 contacts will be getting closed when this s1 contact is getting closed the first resistance set will be uh, you know, shunted or it will be uh, removed from the circuit. Once it is uh, removed, then that means we have only two set of resistance in connected in series with the coil. And once after again certain time uh, duration or a time period, again the second timer is getting energized. Once it is energized, then the TR2 contact will be closed, then S2 will be on. When S2 is on, then here it will be closing. So when these three contacts are getting closed, only one set of resistor will be connected in series with the motor and now the reduced voltage will increase to the next level. And the same time the S2 is getting closed here, it is enabling the timer 3. And again after certain uh, time delay, what is going to happen, this TR3 is going to get closed. And once it is closed, once it is closed, then S3 is going to energize and once it is energized then all the three resistors will be uh, you know shunted or removed from the circuit it will be directly fed to the motor and uh, the supply will be fed to the motor so the motor will run at a rate at full speed and it will deliver full flow torque so this is about four step primary resistor starting method so certain facts related to this method, it is a simple in construction, low initial cost and uh, low maintenance, smooth acceleration in operation, continuous connection of the motor to the line during starting period. So there is no interruption of power at any time, either it is 25 percentage or 50 percentage or 25 percentage, any time there is a supply to the motor, not like the other uh, methods something like a star delta method where you interrupt the supply and then you change over to the next uh, connection method it is not like here it is always connected with the supply so the voltage may be uh, different at different stages high power factor because of uh, the resistance which we have connected uh, in series with uh, the motor so the inductive nature will be uh, you know compensated using uh, resistors so the power factor will be high during start and typical applications are those where belt drives may slip or where large gears, fan blades or coupling may damage by sudden shorts. 
uh, requirements we must understand the motor name plate full load amp that is full load current then locked rotor current we must know the hp rating of the motor and the torque versus speed characteristics so how the torque and speed is linked so whether if when we are increasing the load what happens to the torque and what happens to the speed starting and stopping requirements sometimes we need a smooth start and smooth stop and sometimes we need sudden start like a jogging operation and sometimes we need only smooth either the smooth stop or smooth on so based upon the application it may change say for example uh, the jog option for a duff mixer and a coal handler and plastic extruders something like that and some pump applications we need a smooth stop yeah so this kind of uh, different applications may require different starting and stopping requirements and torque requirements of the machinery driven and uh, load inertia so how much load you need to pick from the initial stage so and how much load uh, you need in the normal running condition so number of a start per uh, required per hour so this uh, starting method is going to uh, dissipate a certain amount of energy in terms of heat because it is a resistor we are going to reduce the voltage by dropping the voltage in the resistor so if you have a frequent start and stop uh, stop then it may you know um, dissipate more amount of heat and also this will be a power loss for um, the machine and it which will not be uh, you know good to have this kind of a starter overload protection and uh, with respect to overload protection we have class 10 starters and class 20 starters so the class 10 starters are nothing but uh, the starter which will trip when it takes uh, six times the motor current load current and it will wait for 10 seconds so when when you are loading the motor for uh, almost uh, uh, six, 600 percentage of the full load current and uh, it, it may wait until 10 seconds so if that is the case then it is a, a class 10 starter if if the um, you know overload protection waits for 20 seconds uh, 20 seconds with uh, six times of the motor uh, full load current then it is called a 20 um, uh, you know class 20 starters and if uh, the same starter uh, which for 30 seconds when the motor takes 600 percentage of the full load current then it will be called as class 30 starters so these are the different type of um, overload protection requirements as well and electrical service ranges line voltage how much we have and enclosure type so these are the different type of uh, you know parameters which we need to consider before uh, selecting the voltage reduced voltage uh, starters Thank you. I hope you understood the concepts. If you have any doubts, please let me know in the comment box. Thank you. Thank you.